concept that really is important to me is the idea of learning by example. We often talk about leading by example, but if people, especially in education, don't see your willingness to grow, to try new things, then it's really hard to get people to move forward if they don't see you doing the exact same thing. And that's why I was so excited to have Superintendent Scott Cowart on the podcast today. Now, I'm actually joining Scott's uh, leadership team, working with his teaching staff, and I'll be doing their opening day um, coming up you know, this fall. And I'm really excited about this. And as I was talking, we were planning for this. I said, I'd love to have you on the podcast so I can learn more about you, who you are, what you do, and really kind of hear about what your hopes are for that time when I join your staff. So this is something I do quite a bit with the groups that I'm working with, but I thought this would be great to kind of see the behind the scenes, have some of these conversations and really kind of connect. And one of the things that really resonated with me um, talking to Scott today is that he's been in education 40 plus years. So he's been, a, you know, he, he started, um, he started teaching before uh, I was even in school and he's continuously growing. He's continuously learning. And that really matters to me. And you could be in your first year of teaching and be done if you're not willing to learn. Whereas some of the most innovative people I've ever met in the profession are 45, 50 plus years into education, but they're still willing to grow, still willing to learn. And once you stop learning, then it's time for you to get out of education. And that to me is something that really matters, that willingness to grow, to learn by example. And Scott does this so beautifully in this podcast, and there's a lot that you can learn from him. So uh, before you get into the podcast, I really encourage you to like and subscribe, leave a comment uh, of something that you took away from this podcast, because it, it is really such a great example of um, leadership and how people need to learn by example if they really want to grow as an organization. I hope you enjoy this. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have Scott Cowart, uh, here. He is the uh, superintendent in, in Carroll County, just in Georgia, and uh, just an absolutely uh, um, uh, amazing group of people I've connected with. And uh, as uh, I was actually invited to speak to um, your leadership team, I'll be doing a short address with your, with your entire staff uh, before I actually enter there. And kind of as we were planning this, I said, I would love for Scott to be on uh, my podcast, I can learn more about him, his vision, uh, your district. And I've been just blown. I, I don't even know why I'm coming out there because it seems like you're doing pretty, <laughs> it's pretty amazing stuff. So hopefully I can help you in some way because um, just incredible people um, that I've connected with so far and just blessing. I know people that have actually joined your district in the past as well. And so Scott's been in education 40 plus years one of the things that really stuck out to me, other than he's a huge basketball fan, which everyone who listens to podcasts know I love basketball. He continuously grows and evolves, and um, he really kind of sets this expectation of himself, which I think really permeates, you know, within your organization. So, Scott, thank you so much for being on the podcast. If you can tell everyone a little bit about who you are, what you do today, and how you got to that place, I'd be that'd be a great place to start. Absolutely, I was fortunate to be born and raised here in Carroll County, so I'm actually superintendent of, of the place I went to school and, and actually had my first job in Carroll County. So now I'm back. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to interface with this community and, and to positively impact lives. Um, you know, my role as a superintendent is to do everything that I can uh, to make sure that every person we connect with uh, has their life enriched. Uh, we lift them up and we, we make sure that we make their day better by their uh, interaction with us. Uh, so I, I'm kind of like the chief cheerleader. Uh, I'm, I'm the chief encourager, the chief positivity guy, uh, and, and I love it. Uh, but to do that, uh, as you said, George, what, what has challenged me is that I have to continue to grow. Uh, I have to continue to learn and, and evolve. Uh, I love the words you use, you know, uh, uh, to evolve uh, after 40-something years. You know, how, how do you come back and deal with some of the same topics that you talked about 
five years ago, 10 years right. ago. And you, you know, culture is an animal you never defeat. So how do you come back and talk about culture in a new way and, and connect with different groups of learners uh, and leaders and teachers and, and people? So uh, we, we work hard to try to model for our folks uh, to be continuous learners. One of our phrases that we use is self-directed learning. Uh, you know, we believe each individual should be in charge of their own learning uh, and we should be uh, committed to learning, but that we should be self-directed. So uh, that's a part of how we work with our leaders is they each choose their own uh, topic or idea each year that they take and move forward with. And that's their professional learning goal for the year. And, and we use that as a part of the evaluation process, but it's chosen by them. Uh, and, and they choose what they do with it. And they choose what they may study or not study and apply it. So self-directing uh, learning is huge because at the end of the day, yeah, I'm talking about adults, but uh, what we really want are students who, when they graduate from high school, that they are self-directed learners because mm -hmm. whether they are uh, going to go be enrolled or they're going to be employed or enlisted, whatever they choose to do with their life, if they're self-directed learners, they're going to be successful. Well, that's actually one of the big things that I've talked about for years and I think is so important. I talk about this difference between moving from engagement to empowerment, that, how they are connected. But the thing that I've always said is that if when you're engaging students, they're really dependent on what the teacher does. But when you empower kids, it's about helping them figure out how to find their own pathway forward. That if kids walk out of our classrooms and they leave our schools and they still need us to learn and find their way, we actually have not done our job, right? It's how you get them excited about these things, how you get them to see they have such control over their own past as they're moving forward. So that to me um, really starts with how we, you know, embody, embody ourselves as learners that we're willing to grow, willing to do new things. I, I got to ask you this. Is this a, is this the first time you've done a podcast? Because I don't know. Have you done this before? Have you been on a podcast? Cause I, no, I, no, no. This I, is the I, first time. See, I'm growing today. And that's, and, she, and that's a, I, I mentioned this to charity. I said, I would love for Scott to be on the podcast. And she's like, well, he's never done one, but I know he will, which, which tells me a lot about your leadership immediately is that you're willing to try things differently. And what, what a, what a great example you are, um, you know, as a superintendent. And one of the things that you said, and I'm really curious about this, uh, I, I've got to travel, you know, all over the world, work in different districts and, one of the challenges that I've seen over and over again is in some communities, there are educators who, who just like you grew up in that place, went away for the shortest amount of time as possible, came right back. And part of the reason they did that is because they liked how it was. They, they don't want things to change. They like how things are. So, you know, kind of being in a community that you grew up in, is that is something you ever face as a challenge? Is that something, you know, you, you've really been thoughtful of? Um, because I'm sure there's some traditions that are really important, but, you know, there, there are traditions that are important, but it doesn't mean we get stuck in, in the past as well, that we're continuously evolving. Do you see that as something that's kind of uh, unique to your community, something that you've had to be thoughtful of, or how, how does that work in, 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 your, in your own district? When you look at the trajectory of my career, it's, it's actually something that's been a constant. Uh, I was a teacher and coach in the school that I went to. I was assistant principal and principal in the school that I taught. And now I'm superintendent in the system where I did all of that and grew up in it. And my family lives in this community and I know so many people. So, yes, I faced a, a, a number of challenges, but but absolutely the the best thing that ever happened to me professionally when it comes to that concept or that idea is the eight years that I left Carroll County and went somewhere else. And, and my eyes were totally opened uh, to the way things are done differently in different places. And that there's more than one way to get to a solution. Uh, and, and there's so many ways to uh, evolve and change and grow. Uh, and, and yes, each you community is unique and ours is i can promise you it is really exactly. unique in some ways uh, and some of those are challenges by the way but you know what you you, you take that context and then and, and so my responsibility is how can i help our community grow how, how do i help improve, improve the quality of life how do i change the trajectory for young people that i'm working with and uh and so i have to embrace the fact that even though it's a challenge uh, because some people know me as Scott. Oh, you know, hey, I remember you when you were in school. Sure. Hey, I remember you when you were the basketball coach. You know, I go into uh, uh, 
target and somebody, Coach Cower, Coach Cower. And uh, so, you know, that's both a, a blessing and a little bit of a curse sometimes. But but we embrace it because, again, it's, it, it is, as you said, it's about uh, evolution, change. It's mm -hmm. about improvement. And, you know, I, I get great uh, – uh, enjoyment out of seeing our community grow and, and helping our school system do a better job uh, for our students here in Carroll County. So that, that was actually something that really stuck out. Um, one of the things I do just kind of behind the scenes of the podcast, uh, I never just meet the guests and press record. We kind of just talk and I kind of learn. And we were talking about kind of focusing on learners, not just students and seeing that as adults and you, you said something really powerful and I, I hope you can share with everyone here because i think it's something that's really meaningful especially in education today where you know people are there's a lot of people feeling very disillusioned with education right uh, you can see a lot of people are leaving the profession but you talked about helping people find their purpose and so can you talk a little bit about what you shared with me because i thought that was really powerful and i think it's a really important message especially in the world today well i mean um in Carroll County, our vision is to be recognized as a, as a uh, premier school system. But we had had that out there for a number of years, and, it, it, and we still had a void. We had a gap. Uh, you know, we still didn't quite do what it needed to do. And so we get entered a discussion about, well, that's our vision, and we got a mission, but what's our purpose? Why do we get up and come to work every day? You know, why do we uh, – face the things that we face, deal with the issues we deal with, or the problems or whatever it may be. You know, what's our purpose? And uh, so we had some deep discussion as a district. And at the end of the day, what we determined that our purpose is, is to positively change lives. Uh, so when we talk to our, our people, you know, we ask the question, you know, what are we doing today with, with every person we interface with to positively uh, impact that person, to make that life um, better to enrich them, to lift them up or whatever it may be. So whether it's a student, a uh, fellow staff member, a parent or community member, it matters not. Uh, all of them deserve for us to give them the very best experience we can give them and to positively enrich their opportunity so that their trajectory in life is improved. Mm -hmm. So our purpose is to positively change lives. Uh, and that really is the statement of what we want our culture to be about here at Carroll County Schools. Well, in the, when I grew up in a very small town in Canada and, you know, very similar to what you're talking about, the the school and the school district, what it, I don't want to even say it was central to the community. It was the community, right? It was so important aspect of what we do. And that was really something that mattered to me when I went into uh, administration, when I became a teacher. And I remember specifically we had um, we were really kind of moving forward, you know, getting kids to actually. Um, really think about how they use technology in meaningful ways. But there is a little bit of a gap because we had um, many families in our school community that didn't have access to this technology at home. Right. And we didn't just talk about how do we get this stuff in the hands of kids? We're like, how do we help, you know, the families are doing this. So we, we did this really simple thing. Um, we actually had computers in the front foyer that any parent in our community could use for whatever they needed to do, whether it was like online banking, things like this, because they didn't have access. And then they started kind of, you know, utilizing this, getting better, and they could better help their kids too, right? Because, you know, when we help the adults, we are helping the kids. And I think that that's something that that is, uh, you know, really important and it really kind of resonated with me when you when you started talking about that today, because a lot of times we're so focused on our students, but the people that are with them, you know, after school, you know, the parents and stuff like that, they need to feel that valued. Well, the, the teachers mm -hmm. and the administrators, the, the support staff, um, when they feel valued, they lift people up too. And so that, that's one of the things I'm really excited about, you know, kind of how, how are you doing this? So I get to, to join you all, um, in, in July. And this is a question I was hoping that, you know, I kind of, you know, as you got to know me a little bit better, we got to know each other. I know that's going to be a weird thing. What do you hope that I do for your staff that day? And I wanted to kind of do like, I usually ask people this before, but never record it. So this is a little bit of me trying to put myself out there as well. So what would be the best way um, I could help your community um, when my addressing your, your admin team, your, your teach, your teaching staff, uh, your support staff, what, what do you see as how I could help help you out the most? 
Well, if you think about uh, the time of the year you're coming in, George, you know, late July, it's right up before school starts. Uh, so we, you'll be with our all of our leaders from the county, a little bit over 100 leadership staff. And then you'll get to do, uh, I think, a video for our, our teachers, too, for our convocation piece. But what they need at that point in time is, is someone to, to look them in the eye and say, you know, what you do is important. Mm -hmm. What you do is valuable. You know, the world needs people who are committed to positively changing lives and know every day when you go in that classroom or you go in that office or you get on that bus or you walk in that kitchen in a lunchroom, wh whatever you do for the school system, you, you have an opportunity every day uh, to make a difference. And in, in doing that, uh, not only will you inspire them about what they're about to embark on, but then you will, for us, you know, and quite honestly, George, we, we very intentionally sought out uh, speakers who could do this, who then validate the way we look at the world, uh, validate the fact that that's what the, the culture is that we want to see, not only for our entire school district, but when I walk in an individual classroom, uh, that's the atmosphere I want to see. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see kids sitting in a row, white, you know, teacher up in front of the room just talking. I mean, that, that's not that's not learning. That's not a positive environment for, for getting kids to get to where they need to be. We, we need to see kids engaged. We need to see excitement. We need to see positivity. Uh, and we need to see kids, you know, really um, going like, oh, man, this is, this is a place I want to be. You know, not a place I have to go to, but this is a place I want to be. You know, and, and if there's a way that we can find them for our teachers to feel like, I don't have to go to work, I get to go to work. Right. I get to go change lives today. Um, and, and so, again, I think um, you can help validate that that's what we're looking for. And, uh, you know, we, we we feel like we've got the, the right people who will be in the room to hear the message and receive the message and then take that and and just go do amazing work in the coming school year. Yeah. And one of the one of the things that I noticed and, you know, you, you can tell you can tell a lot um, by the interactions that you have with you know, the people that you work with, that you connect with. Uh, I'm sure you notice this too. There's so much you can tell about a culture of a school uh, within the first five minutes of walking in, connecting with the, the support staff, you know, how you're greeted, you know, how, how you feel in that space. It tells you a lot uh, about the culture. And I think a lot of people, you know, recognize that. And as you said, that's really important to validate. But the other part of it too, that I think you have really embodied is that, we still, we, there's, we're doing pretty amazing, but we always can get better just like we ask of kids. And that's something that is really important too, but we don't necessarily get better when all we focus is on the things that we're doing wrong. Uh, you know, the places that we need to grow, you have to, you know, make sure people feel appreciated. And when they're appreciated, they're more likely to get better, right? right. They're more likely to grow and kind of connect that. And so we are recording this uh, in March. It's probably posted um, in April you know, school, the school year is coming to a close. And, you know, we're talking about when I start the school year and, you know, before the, the new year begins, but I, I, I'm going to admit, I know you're a big basketball guy, right? How you close is really important too. Wow. Right. Right. And this is something I always say, like when I'm watching basketball games, I'm like, Hey, it's really important who starts, but I'm always watching who ends the game. Right. Cause that tells you something. So if you were to, you know, maybe share not only with your community and your staff, but educators all over the world, what's like some advice that you give to people as they're coming into the end of the school year? Well, uh, it's interesting that you pose that question because we actually talk strategically with our folks about starting fast. Uh, and, and we say that starting fast starts right now. It doesn't start in July. It starts in March, in April, and May. So we're getting ready to start fast. But if you start fast, then you get to finish strong. It's sometimes difficult to finish strong if you can't start fast. Now, it's not impossible, but it's right. much easier to finish strong if you start fast. So we, we actually put the two together uh, and, and focus on it. And, and we talk about that right now we have our feet in both sides. Uh, you know, we're, we're heads down, finishing strong, doing what we need to do to have a great end of the school year. But but the other foot's over there. What do we got to do right now to make sure we start fast? 
and, and we're and to start fast. You got to be prepared, uh, and you got to have the plan, and you got to have the people uh, in in place, and and, and everybody's got to know what their what their job is. And so we we deal we're a little different. We 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 deal with both of them at the same time. I, I don't think you can set things aside on and deal with them in isolation. But finishing strong is is you know look in the tournament right now. Those teams that are punching their tickets. Uh, to be in the big dance, you know, right. they're finishing strong. Uh, but most of those probably started fast, too. I love that. And that that really kind of, you know, highlights the importance of, like, building momentum, right? Like, to not see it as, like, kind of a, a separate season, if you must. But, they're, you know, it's, it's the growth of a culture, right? Uh, again, right. a basketball analogy, you know, I, I'm an I'm a Orlando Magic fan now because, you know, we moved to Orlando and seeing this. And there's a lot about how they're kind of, you know, going into this year to build to next, as opposed to, well, next season's a new season, right? No, no, no. Actually, next season is, is be, that culture is being built right now, which, which I absolutely love. Um, when we were talking about this, uh, you know, when we were talking before we got on the podcast, um, you had actually mentioned, and I, I like just so appreciate your leadership style and what you do. Um, Cause you, you are, <laughs> You're actually doing your homework before I come out there and you are, and not because I asked you to, but you just, uh, so Charity told me this about you. I don't know if I should be dis dispelling <laughs> this, this thing, right? So she told me, yeah, she was going to buy you my book to, before I come out there. And then she went to you, was like, no, I already bought it. <laughs> I already did it. And so you jumped on ahead. So like, when you look at some of the stuff that I wrote in that book, like, is there some, is there a takeaway that you've had so far something that's connected with you? Something that ties to um, your own district right now? Like what, what's something that's resonated with you as, as you're reading this process? Well, that, that kind of connects back to what you were saying at the beginning about uh, being a continuous learner, you know, always looking to get better. I mean, how, how yeah. do you take something that's good and make it better? Uh, and, uh, so that it's a mindset, I think is probably so far what, it, what I've read in the book is just makes me think about, you know, how, what's my worldview, you know, what, what is my, uh, thought process for what classrooms should look like, what, uh, mm -hmm. what my district should look like, you know, how, how do I create a mindset where people are, um, genuinely innovating because that's what we do that's the way we do business. That's, that's part yeah. of our culture. You know, I talked about our purpose is to positively change lives. So to positively change lives, think about this, George, we have to be continually reinventing ourselves because the kids are changing. They're evolving. You know, they're, they're different today than they were five years ago, 10 years, 15 years. So if, if we're not willing to innovate in the way that we approach um, our, how we teach and how students learn, uh, if we keep doing it now the same way we did 25 years ago, um, we're, there's a reason people would be disillusioned with education. We, we want to be one of those school districts where people look at it and say, hmm, they, they're doing something neat, different. You know, they're, they're, they're a group I want to be a part of because they're going to provide my child a different experience than what they could get somewhere else. You know, okay, so like, it's really weird because sometimes things hit me a little bit slower. <laughs> And as I was listening to your answer to that question, I was like, oh yeah, he's literally living the idea of starting fast. That's why he picked up the book. He got it before he's like getting into this stuff. Right. And one of the things that I really have appreciated about getting to know you and really kind of connecting with you today, that this is the most, this is the most important element of leadership for me. And you know, wherever you are, is that you are never asking people to do something that you are not doing yourself. And you are living that. And I, I just, I, I love that the every person that I've connected with from your district, it, weirdly enough, speaks very highly of you. And you've also exceeded their expectations by your willingness to grow and learn. So I, I'm so excited to to, to work with, with you all. And I hope that your your staff, you know, maybe... They'll watch this. I used to like blog when I was a principal and worked in central mm -hmm. office. I knew people were reading it, but they like, it was like their dirty little secret. They didn't want to admit they were reading my stuff, which <laughs> they would reference it sometimes. But I, I hope, um, I hope that they get to see this side of, uh, you know, of you. I'm sure they do already, but I, I'm really excited to, to work with you all and it, to get to know you better too. So thank you so much for your leadership and thanks for all you do for education. 
thank you for having me on. And we really look forward to having you in Carroll County. Love it. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. Make sure you connect with Scott um, after the podcast. Uh, Absolutely amazing leader. Uh, Have a wonderful day. Take care.